उस Today in the media conference with Lal Goyal, which is brought to you by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, Malnadu TV India, News Gaon Se, Samvaz Sarokar News, Bharat New Post News, Organ Donation India Foundation and Gyan. Our endeavor is to enlighten you with the current topic. And today's topic is not only current but relevant for almost all the families in India. The topic is youth conclave on dowry. A dowry is a transfer of parental property, gifts, property or money upon the marriage of a daughter, bride. Dowry contrasts with the related concepts of bride price and dower. While bride price or bride service is a payment by the groom or his family to the bride on her family, dowry is the wealth transferred from the bride or her family to the groom or his family. Similarly, dower is the property settled on the bride herself by the groom at the time of marriage and which remains under her ownership and control. Dowry is an ancient custom and its existence may well predate records of it. Dowries continue to be expected and demanded as a condition to accept a marriage proposal in some parts of the world, mainly in parts of Asia, Northern Africa and the Balkans. In certain Asian countries, Disputes related to dowry sometimes results in acts of violence against women, including killing and acid attacks. The custom of dowry is most common in cultures that are strongly patrilineal and that expect women to reside with or near their husband's family. Dowries have long histories in Europe, South Asia, Africa and other parts of the world. In India, dowry is called Dahej in Hindi and Jahej in Arabic, among the Islamic community derived from Islamic jahej e fatimi In far eastern parts of India, dowry is called on pot. Dowry is a payment of cash or gifts from the bride's family to the bridegroom's family upon marriage. It may include cash, jewelry, electrical appliances, furniture, beddings, crockery, utensils, car and other household items that help the newlyweds set up their home. In India, the dowry system puts great financial strain on the bride's family. Payment of dowry is now prohibited under the Dowry Prohibition Act 1961 in Indian civil law and subsequently by sections 304B and 498A of the Indian Penal Code, IPC. Despite anti dowry laws in India, it is still a common illegal practice. Other laws attempting to address the problem include the dowry and bridal gifts restrictions rules 1976 and the dowry prohibition maintenance of lists of presents to the bride and bridegroom rules 1985 which are intended to document gifts and provide complaints with stronger evidence in the event that prosecution for crimes against the bride occurs later. Dowry in India is not limited to Hindus or any specific religion. It is widespread. For example, Indian Muslims call dowry as jahej. jahej. Justify the practice in terms of jahej if fatimi. Islamists clearly classify jahej into two cat categories. The first comprises some essential articles for the outfit of the bride as well as for conjugal life. The other is made up of valuable goods, clothes, jewelry and amount of money for the groom's family which is settled on after bargaining. The jahej often for a far exceeds the cost of Bharat. Although Indian laws against dowries have been in effect, 
for decades they have been largely criticized as being ineffective the practice of dowry deaths and murders continues to take place unchecked in many parts of the india and this has further added to the concerns of enforcement dowry murders persists it is the killing of a wife for not bringing sufficient dowry to the marriage it is the culmination of a series of prior domestic abuses by the husband's family section 498a of the indian penal code required the bridegroom and his family to be automatically arrested if a wife complains of dowry harassment the law was widely abused and and in in 2014 the supreme court ruled that arrests can only be made with a magistrate's approval disputes related to dowry sometimes results in violence against women including killing and acid attacks amnesty international has stated i quote the ongoing reality of dowry related violence is an example of what can happen when women are treated as property brides unable to pay the high price to marry are punished by violence and often death at the hands of the, their in-laws or their own husbands unquote the declaration on the elimination of violence against women classifies violence against women into three categories that are occurring in the family domestic violence that occurring within the general community and that perpetrated or condoned by the state family violence is defined as follows physical sexual and psychological violence occurring in the family including battering sexual abuse of female children in the household dowry related violence marital rape female genital mutilation and other traditional practice harmful to women non spousal violence and violence related to exploitation dowry is widely considered to be the both a cause and a consequence of son preference the practice of dowry inevitably leads to discrimination in different areas against daughters and makes them vulnerable to various forms of violence this may lead to girls being unwanted sex selective abortion or her parents may abandon or mistreat her after she is born unicef notes dowry helps perpetuate child marriage the world health organization who has expressed concern for dowry related femicide citing one study that dowry deaths occurs primarily in areas of the indian subcontinent yet free prosecution and rare convictions for dowry related violence against women unodc includes dowry deaths as a form of gender based violence dowry deaths are deaths of a married women uh, dowry deaths are deaths of married women who are murdered or driven to suicide by continuous harassment and torture by their husbands and in-laws over a dispute about their dowry making the women's homes the most dangerous place for them to be India reports the highest total number of dowry deaths with 8391 such deaths reported in 2010 i am sure this number has in, might have increased far more because now we are in 2021 meaning there are 1.4 deaths per 1 lakh women female dowry deaths accounts for 40 to 50% of all female homicides recorded annually in india representing a stable trend over the period 1999 to 2016 about 4.6% of the total crime against women in india were dowry death related and another 1.9% were related to violation of dowry prohibition act the dowry death rate in india has been about 0.7 women per 1 lakh every year from 98 to 2009 and afterwards it has increased to 1.4 death per 1 lakh in the 99 to 2016 so it is increasing it's not decreasing now to discuss this very very important very serious and very relevant topic which is required very badly especially in india especially in those societies where the dowry hungry parents asking as rather they are selling their sons to take the money from the bride's family to discuss this very very important topic we have eight youths with us and we have our chief guest with us and i would like to introduce my chief guest 
Our chief guest is, and I welcome her today on our program. She is Advocate Krishna Goswami. Advocate Krishna Goswami is the board member of District Legal Service Authority, District Court, Mathura. She was the president of Banasri Student Union in 1974. She was awarded by Bar Association Mathura for working as counselor DLSA in 2006. She was awarded by Giant Group of Mathura Vasundhra for women's empowerment and social work in 2014. She was awarded by Municipal Board Vindavan for her social works in 2015. she is working as a counselor appointed by honorable high court for last 21 years and handled in and managed more than 10000 cases she counseled and even tried her best to settle the disputes so that families can live happily in its of instead of separating welcome advocate krishna goswami on our show advocate krishna goswami you being the member of, uh, in this uh, counseling Uh, as a counselor you are working appointed by the high court up high court to you uh, you and you have done as uh, as per your profile more than 10000 cases i am sure many of the cases are related to dowry which you are dealing almost every day now and you know in north india this dowry is like a devil the people are sucking the money they are suckers they are like blood suckers they want money in any case just to show off that they have a son we would like to know your views on dowry advocate krishna goswami please please unmute yourself please unmute please unmute advocate goswami please unmute please unmute no we can't hear you please you have to unmute please unmute please unmute not yet there is a sign no please unmute we can't hear you you have to unmute please advocate goswami please unmute okay advocate goswami is just coming uh, she is getting her yes you have unmuted now switch yeah switch on the video please yes yes, yes please sorry sir uh, next please. we are it uh, yeah yeah advocate goswami you have to go back your head is going up of the screen so either you go back or you uh, put your hi so, so, no okay, no 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 you will you are see, you put your your chair just push back side push your chair chair back side yes okay? now it's okay yeah, go ahead thank please. you so much good morning everybody nice to be here merit i would like to discuss the dowry provision act which has been given to me marriage is a social religious custom in marriages we always expect a very beautiful and a girl from a wealthy place so that she brings money with cash and kai the son of the in laws house they think that the son is the person from whom we can get a proper bride and from that bride we expect to it is true that now society has changed the legal thing is that the boys and girls both of them are highly educated but the demand for dowry is not less thing the more educated the family is if your son is a doctor engineer is officer then they feel that we will get more dowry from the place of where we get our daughter or son married now the thing is the society has changed so much this thing has not changed people have become educated but the demand for dowry has increased it is not lessening very few families are left who do not demand for dowry the newly married girl as soon as she enters the house the in-laws expect that she has brought a big dowry a thing which they wanted from their son's education the son has been brought up in such a way that the lakhs of rupees have been spent on his education so that money has to be they has they are supposed to get that money back from the in law side that is why they search a house where they can get a good girl with sufficient dowry now the dowry is the newly married woman you are, every time we are going through the newspaper 
that every second day there is a case of dowry death or burn or she commits suicide or she is thrown away from the house or she is harassed in such a way that she herself commits suicide now in the newspapers when you go through it the too much of harassment is there what the legal thing is to check this legal harassment of dowry social awareness is must without social awareness we can't go against this because it's a mal practice which people are thinking that their son would be very rich if they get married to a richer family now the problem is that the higher class what they feel they get scared of dowry nowadays because they know the lots and lots of harassment is there in marriages as soon as they get married they think they either they are selling their son it is true that is why they are selling their son in cash they are not getting their bride they are thinking they are getting the money back from which we have invested through our child it's a very very wrong practice of the parents who think in this form i personally feel that your son or my son is not to be sold i want a better family a better relationship from that family from where i get a girl she will look after me dowry is not the criteria whatever gifts she gets from her in law or from the other parents or from her friends is a stray gain we have no concern i personally feel that the things belong to her we have no concern for the dowry it should be that the love we have got a lakshmi in a house the daughter which we have chosen is a lakshmi who will bring prosperity in our house to check this in 1961 dowry prevention act was introduced dowry taken or demanded or abetment for dowry is a crime it is a punishable act which is to be is a very very serious thing the people who force their in laws or daughter in laws to get the dowry or they force for certain things in many villages which cases have come across especially the middle class the, the gramin kshetra as we call rural area they for they ask for bhans humko bhans chahiye hindi mein se bina bhans ke bayan na hoga in in brijbhasha jaise bina bhans ke bayan na hoga that is why they want a bhans the, the bridegroom and the bhans are i as far i think in the same category because without bhans they will not get to they will not get bail they will not get money and as far as the girl who is being harassed she is supposed to get lots and lots of dowry in this sort of kind and cash now the introduction of prevention act was made to check the dowry the crime rate was so high earlier before the section act came up the parents used to give good dowry to the daughters it was before independence i am talking before the succession act hindu succession act was passed so that the girl who was sent she was sent with a handsome amount so that her life is secured over there and she gets proper respect but now the scenario has changed now this is not the formula of life the formula of life is totally different from time to time the acts have been introduced in 1983 special criminal act was passed in which husband or near relatives if they were harassing the newly wed then they were supposed to be punished again another amendment was passed another rule was passed in 1884 1984 the amendment was to check the form of gifts which they got the gifts in the form like jewelry clothes car washing machine but the form was that they had to give a list to both the sides and the both the sign sides had to sign the document as a document so that they were particularly thoroughly they got the things it was that in which 
the dowry was elaborately explained. Burden of proof if the daughter was murdered or thrown away from the house due to harassment, the burden of proof was on the accused if the man was caught or the family members were caught. Now I would explain you what is dowry. Dowry is valuable security for the daughter in the form of property, in the form of expensive gifts given to her by her parents at the time of marriage. The, the gifts which she get is known as three dhan. In this category, the dowry is given to the women by her parents. That is the security which she has. The daughter is supposed to have her three dhan within herself. She is not supposed to hand over the three dhan to her in-laws. If she is the master, she is to be the custodian of that property. Nobody can force her to get that she done or she can't even give anything if she doesn't want. Only the thing is, if they don't get it, the harassment starts from that very day because they think the she done which she is having or she has got it, that belongs to the in-laws. The woman has no right over that she done, but it's absolutely wrong. If there is a case of dowry harassment, then the cases are filed and, and the police officers, the judicial magistrate, the first class magistrate has to go through the matter very seriously and he has to see the seriousness of the case. Then only the in-laws are to be punished. The cases are not compoundable. They are non-compoundable. The dowry matters cannot be decided by their own if they have filed a case in the court. The matter has to be decided by the judicial magistrate or equal magistrate. Then only the investigation starts. What is the reason behind dowry? What is the reason behind murder? What is the reason behind suicide? All such things takes place when you go and file a suit in the case. It's a very, very serious matter. Nowadays, too much of harassment is being made because of the of this dowry. Now I would request the society that people should, as the, both the girls and boys are highly educated, they, was, they should never think of this sort of thing. This malpractice should be abolished and the, they should come out in the society with a broad heart so that they welcome the daughter as their daughters are there, their sisters are there. If this thing happens with their daughter, their sister-in-law, then what will they do? But when they do such things with the daughter whom they have brought for insufficient dowry, then they think she is useless. She has done a very humiliating thing because it has become a prestigious issue. As their son is a doctor, as their son is an IS officer or IPS or engineer, or on a very high post, they think, what is this? We didn't get a single penny from these people. Are they going to uh, get our son? Or they, are, they, want, they, want, they want money from our side? It is totally reverse. I'm really sorry to say that this harassment is due to the economic culture, the norms and values of the society have changed. People think that money is the main factor in society and we must get it back. According to Rule 8, in the amendments which the, normally the government is doing, the policies are made. Police was to investigate in such cases. The case was to be given without the permission of the magistrate, the case cannot be handled by the police. In taking down the abatement or the abetted person who is to be punished, he is also to be punished because the person who forces the girl's side to give dowry. The punishment is for either at least five years or 15 years, 15,000 rupees to be paid as a fine. And the imprisonment includes not only by five years, but it can be more or less it depends on the judicial officer who decides the case. Direct or indirectly, if the demand is made by in the dowry case, it would be punishable for two years. You can't ask dowry directly or indirectly. 
If you ask dowry, then two years imprisonment and ten thousand rupees as fine. Very important. If the girl is a minor and the dowry is given from her parent side, then the money is to be secured as a trustee, the main member of the family, or someone very very close. The money or the dowry or the things belonging to her will be secured or handed over. to that person who will take care of that money or her belongings till she is 18 that person can never transfer the money or the property which the girl has been given by her parents dowry cruelty now in 1898 under section 498 a this was introduced and it was added you know if a woman committed a suicide or the cruelty by husband or in laws this was done forcefully then it would be have been given the, the the property which that girl has was has to be got, taken by her parents if the harassment was there then they would be punished for cruelty or harassment this 498a is the section in which the girl gets relief dowry debt that is 304 B in dowry death, physically tortured, or death within seven years of marriage, or demand of dowry by anybody. This new act was introduced again in 1961, Rule Two: imprisonment not not less than seven years, and as long as it can be lifelong also, because the girl died. Within seven years of marriage, and it was a real pathetic thing. I would like to give an example, which I faced in my court. A girl, a girl got married. It was only five days. It was only five days of marriage. The harassment was started by a mother-in-law, sister-in-law, and the girl was was eligible enough, was educated enough to call the police. The police. escorted her back to her home and she was uh, she filed a suit after the investigation and she was wise enough to get back what her parents had given then the harassment started from the father side in law side the father had a good turn and he said he the thing i have not sold my daughter i have given those things as security so that my daughter as a good respectable place in a in law's house if the girl dies within the 7 years of marriage then the harassment case are filed in the court if the court against is there in 304 then again the marriages are taken within 7 years the suicide case takes place the magistrate was made compulsory it was added a new form was added and it was made compulsory to go through the matters again and again so that the girl gets relief and another amendment and rule was passed in according to 198a for cruelty that was the in laws were involved, involved in the list in which the harassment case was filed mother in law father in law sister in law the cousins of the relatives they were named, they filed in the case in this case the court was permitted to admit the names of of those in laws which were added in that case the case was heard and the finally the judicial magistrate was supposed to go and file these matters through the police investigation so that proper investigation could be done now i would explain one thing that in such cases the government is taking very serious steps so that the harassment is lessened the girls get respectable position in their in laws house the husband respects her dowry is not the main criteria the life is the main criteria the married life is the main criteria of life that is why only the people are getting more educated and if you are more educated you grow more the life is different but if you think if you start torturing if you tell start taunting every day that you didn't bring dowry you didn't bring this you didn't do that your father didn't give me this 
I want this, then the life becomes hell. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Advocate uh, Krishna Goswami, for giving the legal aspect as well as the social aspect of the dowry. I will just highlight one or two points which she has made. She says the girls are like Goddess Lakshmi. When the Goddess Lakshmi, we when we bring a, any girl marries and comes to your house, uh, to a bridegroom's house, she, earlier she was treated as a Goddess Lakshmi, but afterwards she was not treated even uh, as a normal girl. So this point is to be noted that never uh, somebody says that you are like goddess Lakshmi, you are goddess Saraswati. They are they are meaning thing because after the wedding, after the marriage, after taking the dowry, how much harassment they do. And secondly, one important point for you is what are the gifts and what are the things which are coming to the uh, to the girl side uh, as or at the time of wedding. It all are supposed to be the, the istri dhan and that every gift whatsoever is coming during the wedding is belongs to the girl only no one is having right whether it's a whether it's a jewelry whether it's a any gift or the cash it belongs to girls so the girls please, please be aware that whatsoever you are getting during the wedding it doesn't belongs to anybody not even to the husband it belongs to the lady legally it's called istridhan and thirdly she mentioned about the buffalo which she was mentioning that in villages people says bring uh, if you want to marry your daughter send her with the buffalo then only we'll marry so they equate they equate the girl a daughter with buffalo so you can imagine the condition and this is a fault of everyone i will that i when we will be talking when we'll be taking your views then we i will be, would like to add Things. Thank you very much, Advocate Krishna Goswami, for giving your very, very legal as well as social awakening points. Now, I would like to invite my youth guest, and my first youth guest is Miss Alfonso Paul. Miss Paul, you have heard our chief guest, uh, Miss Advocate Krishna Goswami. Now, we would like to know from you your views on dowry. Miss Paul, please. Please unmute. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I go ahead? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Respected Chief Guest Advocate Krishna Goswami, ma'am, Chief Editor Lal Goel, sir, and my dear fellow panelists, a warm morning to one and all. I am Alfonso Paul, pursuing my degree in St. Joseph's College, Bangalore. Glad to be part of this conference to speak on such a relevant topic of the day. Corruption in governance and dowry in marriages are two big challenges like coronavirus. The trouble and pain it causes as an after effect is entirely huge. With the developing world, we all ought to develop our thoughts and practices too. What is dowry? What is the purpose of taking or claiming such a huge sum? Well, there was a time when taking dowry was considered a tradition. The transfer of parental property, money or gifts upon the marriage of a daughter. Even though dowry has been illegal in India since 1961, it is still prevalent. Actual numbers are not known, but anecdotally, about half of the weddings in our families and friends circles involve dowry. Still, it's rarely reported as a fact. But today, it no longer should continue to exist in our tradition list. Not just because of the rising risks and cases of harassment, but because every girl, every woman is worth more than a million rupees all by themselves and the others. What does price tagging mean here? We are worthy citizens. The real value of life in itself is being deviated by this idea of price tagging. The success rates of relationship is assigned, weighing the monetary value. This is the most absurd of all things I've ever come across. It's important now that we pause and think, what was the purpose behind all these? We gained nothing. Dowry culture has ruined many families, wherein the bread earners of the brides have to struggle to reach the expectations of the grooms. There have been situations where families are forced to sell what little they have. Is this really necessary? It's high time that we realize the worth of every girl child, young or old. 
in an era where education is considered primary, people are still running behind dowry, which is pathetic. This media conference with Lal Bhuel should signal a red light in front of everyone who are advocating dowry. In today's nuclear family system, we should see marriages in a different perspective. Even though a new family is formed in marriage, we should recreate our joint family system with today's possibility of digital connectivity. Family that are connected together will grow faster. Everyone should support each other and grow together. We should realize the real wealth is in the relations we built, not in the families we break. United, every family is strong. Isolated is totally otherwise. We should become more wise. We can create wealth. We need to grab it from others. It is not a necessity at all. Parents should nurture their girls to grow with dignity and respect, and their boys with humility and compassion. Everyone should learn to look at each other with respect, and the youth should take decision not to get into the addiction of dowry. When you depend on somebody's wealth, you are losing your capacity and capability to create wealth on your own. Both husband and wife should join hands together to build the family. Respecting each other will create cordiality in family. The couples will be empowered when mutual respect. Trusting each other and their inner abilities result in miraculous transformation of a new family and eventually it will give way for a new culture. We have great traditions. Let's retain them. Our celebrations are all so wonderful that we always love to be put together. When the West is talking about privacy, we are talking about intimacy. We love to sacrifice things for each other and for the happiness of others. For us, there are no strangers. We are a large family of brothers and sisters. We are a big nation, but certain traditions like dowry is a real shame for the whole of India. Let us unite together to eradicate dowry and corruption. Let's join together to bring an end to this awkward practice. Thank you one and all for having patiently heard me. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Ms. Paul, for giving your very, very candid views. And yes, if the daughters, if the girls of India awaken, as Ms. Paul said, then no one can dare to ask the dowry. And if they put a condition to their own family that if you are paying one rupee even for my wedding, I am not going to marry the boy. Boy might be God. We, I, she don't care. If she says like this, then no dowry will 75% I will say the problem will solve. So what she said, yes, the, the awakening has already started and is going to be started more and more if all of you decide to pledge that you will not give a single uh, 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 rupee as a dowry in the, your own weddings. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Paul, for giving your views. Now, I would like to invite my next youth guest, and she is Ms. Apurva Punja. Ms. Apurva Punja, you have heard our chief guest, Advocate Krishna Goswami, as well as the earlier youth guest. Now, we would like to know your views on dowry, Ms. Apurva Punja, please. Good morning to the esteemed guests of the panel and the viewers. I am Apurva Punja from the beautiful coastal city, Mangalore of Karnataka. I am a biotechnology engineer by qualification, a content writer by profession, and now pursuing master's in business administration and the prestigious Justice Case Hegde Institute of Management. Dowry is an ominous ignominy for India. A convoy of cars brings the newlyweds to the bridegroom's house. After a while, the other cars pull out and drive off. Eventually, one car remains, still wrapped in satin ribbon. It is a part of the bride's dowry. This scene is as much from the Malayalam film the Great Indian Kitchen, released at the beginning of 2021, as it is from real life. A scene that symbolizes entrenched patriarchy within the family home. Vismaya, Aishwarya, Archana, Suchitra, 
are just a few names of the women who have lost their lives due to this ghastly act prevailing in the society of India. According to the Statista Research Department, published in February 2021, India reports 7.1 thousand deaths. Even as the ghastly details of the dowry-related deaths were emerging, there was a horrendous incident on a Malayalam live TV show just last month in June concerning MC Josephine, Kerala Women's Commission Chief. The show had invited women facing domestic harassment or violence to call and directly complain to the commission. There was an anonymous call from Kochi and Josephine asked her if she had complained to the police when the anonymous caller answered in the negative. Josephine, who could have easily helped that woman being in such a powerful position, yet she snapped back in Malayalam, Enna Pinne Anubavicho, which loosely translates to in English, then go suffer. This is something which has been thrown at the generations of women in their own families when they dare to question, defy, or complain. We live in an age where moral outrage spreads faster over social media than you can blink. And yet, a dowry death hardly moves the needle on a moral compass. Why does this disgraceful anachronism, a practice as condemnable as sati or child marriage, continue to thrive? It's 2021 now and time to change these regressive social norms. As a larger initiative, laws and regulations should be screened to remove the gender bias, replacing words like the man of the society, the, uh, the, the main person of the society is a man. So that should be removed. And why can't both a man, husband and a wife be given equal privilege in the family when it because both husband and wife they manage the family together and supposing in a government uh, when a government employee he loses his job or he dies the job is only given to an eligible son or the unmarried daughter but why can't the same job be offered to the married daughter as well women are not lifelong victims but empowered survivors seeking justice and dignity. To become a mass movement, this must start at the grassroots. We need a wider social movement to acknowledge both the man and the woman, to acknowledge basic human worth that is needed to assign this pernicious social evil to flames. I would like to quote an article which I read just two days back in the Deccan Herald, where it says that in Kerala, now it is mandatory to register the wedding gifts at the time of marriage registration itself to curb the dowry demands. Why can't the other states of India also follow this example? I thus conclude by saying the practice of dowry is not only illegal, but also unethical. Therefore, the conscience of the society needs to be fully awakened to the evils of the dowry system so that the demand for dowry itself should lead to the loss of face and society for those who demand it. We, as a nation, can no longer afford to be complacent. Thank you, one and all. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sapurva Punja, for giving your views. And you rightly said the conscious of the society is to be awakened. Until unless society, it's, uh, it's see, the fault lies with everyone, whether we say the parents or even the young generation or the bride or bridegroom. Why the bridegroom is agreeing to taking the dowry? It means he wants the money. So if he wants money, why the bride is ready to go and marry that fellow who is a, who is a such type of a person who wants money? If, if before marriage he is doing like this, the bride should say no, a very big no on the face. And they must the, the girls should say, tell the parents, if the person is asking money, I am not going to marry. Similarly for the boys, if they are asking money, then they have no right to marry. Then they should go and uh, be uh, like, it's like purchasing some vegetable. What they are doing, they, they want to sell themselves. And after that, they dictate. Once you have been sold, you are not supposed to dictate. This is a 
this is a very bad phenomenon of the society. The awakening is required, as you rightly said. So thank you very much, Ms. Apurva Punja, for giving your views. Now, I would like to invite my next youth guest. She is Ms. Bhagyashree Savant. Ms. Bhagyashree Savant, you have heard what our chief guest advocate Krishna Goswami, as well as the earlier youth guest, has mentioned. We would like to know your views on dowry. Ms. Bhagyashree Savant, please. Thank you so much, Lal sir, and it was really amazing uh, hearing to Krishna ma'am and uh, her thought process on the same. So, dowry, of course, as Krishna ma'am also. Gave uh, first, it... first, please introduce yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, good morning, everyone. I am Bhagyashree Saman. I'm a psychologist by profession, and I've been a uh, Guinness World Record holder for cycling across the country 20,000 kilometers, and I've also climbed Mount Everest twice till 8,000 meters. And uh, it's my pleasure to be over here and share my thoughts on the same because especially this Guinness World Record bicycle ride that I did across the country uh, exposed me to a lot of uh, different aspects culturally as well as uh, I cycled across uh, 19 states and 5 million territories in the country. And it was amazing because it was not just the cities that I cycled in. I cycled in the villages and in all these villages, I got a chance to tell them about the uh, importance of literacy, importance of hygiene, importance of sports, especially addressing the girl child as well. So especially now, uh, before I connect the dots, because this all here and there, I would like to tell you about my perspective about dowry. So of course, uh, when it comes to dowry, I feel it more promotes um, inequality because uh, as even Lalsa was saying, we are not purchasing vegetables over here. We are trying to get a girl in her family and we just need to treat her like a daughter rather than having just a daughter-in-law. So this concept has to change. But on the other side, uh, as even Krishna I mentioned that even now the cases are rising, women uh, are being killed, they're being harassed, they're being abused. Or uh, it is also promoting to child marriage because uh, the work, the dowry work, sorry for using this terminology, but yes, the dowry work uh, depends on age of the girl, how educated she is, which also keeps the girl child away from education. It leads to female feticides and infanticides, traps poor people in death. And it's really very challenging to even, even sad to listen or read about such things. But yes, uh, imagine uh, if female feticide just because of dowry has been rising then now uh, what if uh, we have uh, so many uh, women icons like Lata Mangeshkar, we have uh, Kalpana Chawla, uh, we have Sanya Mirza, Saina Neval, PV Sindhu, so many women across the, uh, so many Indian women across the globe making us proud and uh, imagine what if they were the trap of female feticide. So this has to stop. Of course, uh, maybe the cases are increasing now because there is awareness People know that they can report it. Uh, women are getting exposed to this knowledge about uh, domestic violence or what are they supposed to do. They may have knowledge about it. And we, especially being the youngsters and the young blood, it's very important that we pass the right sense to our peers as well. Because what happens is, as parents, uh, when, uh, let's say, a lady, a lady who is given a child to a daughter, and she will say it's normal to give dowry because my parents had also given it. Because we are in this patriarchal society, they may feel that, yes, this is something that has happened, so it's very common, even I need to do it. We never understand the sense behind something. Of course, the sense earlier was to make the girl comfortable. But right now, it's not making the girl comfortable. It's about inviting the girl and what are the other assets we are getting with her that is being the focus. I would like to give a very good example of uh, my personal life. Being a single daughter, uh, my parents didn't want any other child. They did not want any other, uh, a male child to be specific for that matter, because they believe that a girl will take care of the family. And that is the reason why they were happy when I was there in their life. And apart from that, uh, of course, they were saving for my marriage, the big day that we call it for any girl, because especially in India, we focus on the big fat Indian weddings where uh, we want to show uh, in the social, social life how sophisticated we are. But yes, um, when I wanted to climb Everest, the cost of climbing Mount Everest each time is 30 lakh Indian rupees, which is not affordable for any family. But you know what my grandmother and my mother did? 
they sold off their gold jewelries that they were selling uh, saving for my wedding for my passion because they decided instead of saving it for her marriage let us use it for her for her passion and let us support her in achieving her dreams so these kind of transformations are existing and they're very much needed i'm sure we all also know about uh, how many sacrifices because i see more women over here today i see more sacrifices done from the parents for the girl child when it comes to education when it comes to their lifestyle we are being treated as princesses and we are being uh, supported uh, supported for all our passion so that is another perspective that is def- definitely rising a lot and i see uh, so many women leaders coming in in the uh, in the world not just in india but everywhere because uh, i feel that the world is transforming but at the same time there is it's much highly important for all of us to create that awareness with everyone that look this used to happen for a reason which has been a culture let's take an example of our indian wrestler or our olympian or yogeshwar that itself in fact when he was getting married um, since it was a culture to give dowry and it is culturized now of course because we feel that if a girl is getting married you have to give something uh, as a token of love from the girl side he took 1 rupee that's it because all what he wanted to convey is that i don't want to promote dowry but if you want to give me something give me a rupee and that is exactly what he took from the girl side and this was a biggest example he said especially coming from a region where uh, in and around the surroundings there are so many people just uh, i mean dowry is like standardized over there what did you get post marriage what is it that the girl is getting for you he set an example so we need more leaders to set such examples and we being the future of our nation i'm sure we all can do more justice and uh, bring the best side of all of these perspectives and put a full stop over here of course i'm not going to say that the full stop is going to be right away but only now if we start doing it from our family from our peers i'm sure within the next decade we would see a major transformation over here itself so this is my thought process uh, thank you so much sir krishna ma'am it was really uh, pleasure even listening to your thoughts and thank you so much lal sir and paul sir for this opportunity thank you very much uh, ms bhakshi savant first of all i would like to congratulate you that you are a guinness book record holder and you have climbed the mount everest and and the example which you have given yes the parents should also think that the the girl after all mother was also daughter some time even the mother in law was also a daughter at one time why they forget this thing ma bhi kabhi beti thi saas bhi kabhi beti thi ya saas bhi kabhi bahu thi wo kehte hain but main is when the mother is supporting like they have they have supported you your grandmother and mother this shows that if all the mothers decide that for us they are the princess of the house the daughter is more important than anything and they must listen to the daughters instead of listening to the society what is this society why we are bothered for the society and because parents wants to show off their own they want to satisfy their own ego so they want to go for a big fat wedding in india which is very unfortunate thank you very much uh, ms bhakshi savant for giving your very very and lighting views now i would like to invite my next youth guest and she is miss nandita arora miss nandita arora you have heard what our chief guest miss advocate krishna goswami as well as earlier youth guest has spoken now you would like to know your views on dowry miss nandita arora please a very good morning to all the people present here my name is nandita arora and i am currently pursuing bsc in biotechnology from jnarayan vyas university jodhpur and recently i am an intern at indo gulf management association dubai uh, i would like to thank mr lal goel sir mrs krishna ma'am and dr mohan lal agarwal for giving me this opportunity to present my thoughts on this dowry system so i sometimes wonder that why is it always that two amenities leave simultaneously when a girl is getting married that is the dowry and the girl why is it people of 21st century are still practicing this evil crime of dowry yet in spite of modernization and women increasing in the market economy the practice of dowry in india is becoming more wide widespread i recently read somewhere that to put a pause towards dowry system girls should be educated 
I strongly disagree to it. Why is it always that girls should be educated? Educating boys as well as girls should be a major concern so that boys can, cannot accompany their parents to demand the dowry. And on the other side, girls should stand adamant not to accept the boy's proposal for dowry. Education and independent. independence is one powerful and valuable gift that parents can give to their children. This in turn will help them to be financially sound and be a contributing member in the family, giving them respect and right status in the family. Also, accepting dowry should be made a social stigma. All the generation should be addressed. For this social consciousness about the ill effects of the dowry system needs to be aroused. The union and the state government must take steps for stepping up anti-dowry literacy among the people through conferences like this, radio broadcast, televisions, and newspaper on a continuing basis. Youth are the only ray of hope of effectively combat the menace of dowry system. They must be given moral value-based education to broaden their minds and widen their outlook. Dowry, I believe as a youth, I think the dowry system has ruined a heck lot of lives. Started with the tradition of gift, it has been a well-known fact these days. People agree to pay huge amounts in return of good, well-settled son-in-law. Till this date, despite strict laws made against the dowry, we are aware of the so-called gifts a girl has to take to her in-law's house. Partly, I also blame, blame the parents who agree to give away, away humongous amounts. In not so good words, the boy's family puts a price tag on him while the girl's family becomes the buyer according to their pockets. Even after being fulfilled, their demands never seem to end. Not only girls, but also the boy's self-esteem is brutally murdered. It is in our society to look upon the plight of women suffering from the domestic violence of domestic abuse due to dowry system. But little do we blame the parents from both the sides who agree to pay with their children. Youth is strictly against this baseless tradition. But the parents are the one who need to be taught. They should know that they are hurting their children in the name of show off. I'm glad to be a part of a youth that is now slightly bending towards court marriages and saving money for themselves. They are not only career oriented, but also mature enough to understand the value of money. Some couples are even feeding strays. Some are going to shelter homes and feeding the needy. I still stand strong with the fact that the youth should be adamant enough not to let their family indulge in such gross activities. They should be able to stand for them, not being just a mere piece or object to be prized according to their academic excellence. They should not be under any societal pressure. Not only the youth, but the aged citizens should move ahead of the times and stop this tradition. Each family counts. To stop this brain drain and dowry, schools should educate children about the deeming nature of dowry, the financial humiliation people have to face because of it. Instill a mindset in the student from the very beginning age that the best brains of the country, the youth, can serve their country by putting their skills to use for the betterment of country itself. Hence, education and independence is one powerful and valuable gift that you can give to your daughter. This will in turn help her to be financially sound and be a contributing member of the family, giving her respect and right status in the family. So providing the daughter with a solid education 
and encouraging her to pursue a career of her choice is the best dowry any parent can give to her daughter. The youth has a role in convincing their parents. It is not a one-way street. It is always a two-way. You, me, all of us together can and will definitely root this dirty game of money out. Thank you, everyone, for being a patient listener. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ninta Arora. You rightly said that youth has to do. When youth are having so much strength, if the girls decide, why not make a WhatsApp group? Name and shame those who are asking money. You can do it. You have a power. Don't be afraid. If any boy wants money, if any, boy, any family wants money, put the name and shame that this boy is asking so much money. Let it go in your uh, groups. Definitely the time will change when the people will be afraid to ask the money. And, uh, and the time will come definitely now. You are all empowered. You are all educated. Why? What for? There is nothing lacking behind in you. Only thing is you require a, just a strong willpower and to take a firm decision to say no to this. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Miss uh, 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 Ms. Nandita Arora, for giving your views. Now, I would like to invite my next youth guest, and he is Mr. Nishan N. Mr. Nishan N, you have heard uh, uh, our chief guest, ad Advocate Krishna Goswami, an earlier youth guest. And uh, now we would like to know your views on dowry, Rotrex, uh, Nishan, and please. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Nishan. Uh, I'm currently pursuing LLB from SDM Law College and also I'm BCom graduate. So to talk about dowry, dowry is an ancient system under which the parents of the bride pay the bridegroom or his parents money, goods or estate, honoring the bridegroom's willingness to accept the bride in the marriage. It is provided in Dharma Shastra that the meritorious act of Kanyadana is not complete until the bridegroom is given as a Dakshina. Several unsatisfactory explanations have been advanced to explain this practice. He said that in the olden days, dowry served as a form of protection for the wife against the possibility of her ill treatment by the husband and his family. Even today, it is sometimes con contended that Dowry facilitates the groom and his family in taking up the onerous responsibility of supporting the bride for the rest of her life. Other, uh, others even argue that uh, dowry is meant to help newlyweds to set up their own home. Still others satisfy, uh, justify it by saying that uh, dowry is given as compensation to the groom's parents for the amount they have spent in educating and upbringing their son. Now, I will make it clear. Most of such uh, explanations However, make little or no sense. So it is interesting to see uh, that even before Parliament enacted central legislation, some governments had taken the initiative and passed dowry uh, laws applicable within such states. Thus, the Bihar uh, uh, Dowry Restraint Act was passed in 1950, uh, and uh, the Andhra Pradesh Dowry Prohibition Act was passed in 1958. Interestingly. Even before independence, the provi uh, provincial government of Sindh had passed anti-dowry act, aptly called the Sindh uh, Deti Leti Act, 1939, with a view to curb this social menace. Unfortunately, these acts had very little impact on the prevailing social evil, that is dowry. Under Section 2 of the Prohibition of Dowry Act, 1961, says that dowry means any property or variable security given or agreed to be given either directly or indirectly by one party to a marriage to the other party to the marriage or by the parents of either party to a marriage by any other person to either party to the marriage or to any other person at or before or any time after the marriage in connection with the marriage or said parties. But some of these are not covered under umbrella of dowry. They are Dover and Mahar in case of persons to whom Muslim personal law, that is Sharia, applies. Presents with, uh, which are given at the time of marriage to the bridegroom without any demand having been made in that behalf, provided that such presents are ent entered in list in accordance with Rule 2 of the Dowry Prohibition, Maintenance of List of Presents to the Bride and Bridegroom, Rule uh, 1985. 
such presence should be of a customary nature and value thereof should not be excessive having regard to the financial status of the person by whom or on whose behalf such presents are given under section 5 of the act any agreement for giving or taking a dowry has been declared to be void let me add on regarding dowry death it is uh, section 304b of ipc the wife should have uh, died because of burns or any bodily injury her death should have occurred otherwise than under normal circumstances such death should have taken place within 7 years from the date of her marriage soon before her death she should have been subjected to cruelty or harassment by her husband or any of his relative such cruelty or harassment should be for or in connection with any demand for dowry as observed by the supreme court the expression soon before her death has not been defined in this section nor in any definite period been indicated so therefore the period which can be said to be covered by this expression soon before her death is not determined by the court in the background of the fact and circumstances of each cases it depends so presumption under the indian evidence act a new section has also been added in indian evidence act that is section 113b uh, it is now provided that when question before the court is whether a person has committed the dowry death of a woman it is it, uh, if it is shown that soon before her death uh, such women had been subjected to such uh, cruelty or harassment or demand for the dowry the court shall presume that such person had caused connection with the dowry death uh, there are many number of cases with, with regarding to the dowry death uh, and uh, one of that is uh, in a case in that uh, supreme court it was established that the in laws had made instant dowry demands on the Uh, married young woman ultimately it appeared that she was done to death and her body was cremated without sending any information to her parents or any relative the supreme court held that it is it was na- if it was natural death there was no need uh, for the appellant to act in such unnatural manner and to cremate the body in uh, gray, uh, in such a manner they could have told their, her parents they could have cremated in holy uh, haste without uh, even informing the parents in this result it was an unnatural death and uh, supreme court considered it as uh, homicidal uh, and uh, it was it considered supreme court considered it is uh, uh, even uh, even uh, it, it, this case was considered as dowry death case because uh, that parents of the uh, bride group they never mention they never uh, gave information to the girl or uh, girl's family because this was death made by them and uh, to conclude i would like to tell one thing dowry a reason of killing girl child before death dowry a reason why most people want a boy thank you honorable advocate uh, shri goswami ma'am uh, and lal goel sir paul sir and uh, all the participants for uh, uh, hearing me thank you one and all thank you very much uh, mr nishan advocate not advocate right now but yes you are pursuing the and you have given a legal point of on the dowry one word you use that is the protection money are the bride grooms are gundas or underworld how they can ask for the protection money is it legal if if any one says that we have to take care of the girl life long the girl is taking care of the life long that family not the bride groom family is taking care so this protection money is for underworld for gundas or the rowdies fellows so it means the bride groom family to be termed as gundas underworld and the rowdy please do it and i am very happy that a, a, only one gentleman in our except me i am not a gentleman now but he a young boy is there and if his views are like this i am sure india will see very uh, change drastic change when the boys will not ask the dowry i am sure mr nishan will be the first to say no to the family immediately after this program thank you very much uh, mr nishan for giving your views now i would like to invite my next youth guest and she is miss sinora d disuza miss sinora d disuza you have heard our chief guest advocate krishna goswami as well as the earlier youth guest now we would like to know from you your views on dowry miss sinora d disuza please good morning one and all i am nora still in class in st teresa school mangalore any man who makes dowry a condition for marriage 
disrespects his education, his country, and dishonors womanhood. The dowry system was originally present in our country to make it a financial stability for the wife after her wedding. But now it is seen that it has been taken to the advantage of the boy and seen as a source of income where marriage has become a business wherein the bridegroom is won by the highest bidder. The question that strikes us is, why is this system regarded as evil? First and foremost, it is a crime against the dignity of women who have to face emotional abuse, domestic violence, and in the worst cases, is results in the death of the girl or her parents. Besides, it's the root cause of so many other evils existing in our country. Abortion, child marriage, the denial of girls' right to education, deaths, suicide, murder, etc. A daughter, a princess of a father, the pride of a mother, is lowered to the value of common good at the time of a wedding. Why is the girl who has a blessing to bring life into this world considered a curse for her parents and a debt for a lifetime? Is it right? We hear, Beti bachao, Beti padao. But then, even after a girl receives her education, she is not considered eligible for marriage until and unless she gives dowry. If I were to give examples from the recent times, so many highly educated girls, engineers, doctors, they were murdered. Why? Because of the dowry by their so-called educated husbands. Can they call themselves educated in the first place? Where is our future of our country heading towards? We really have lots of questions to answer. So what is the role of the youth? in preventing this evil practice, education. Education helps in bridging the gap between the man and the woman. The educated girls must demand for respect for what we are and not for what we bring. The young boys who are educated must realize that they are receiving the most prized position of their in-laws at the time of their wedding, their own daughter at the, as a gift. Social awareness through mass media. We know that television, newspapers, and radio play an important role in educating the masses, and it can be used for spreading the awareness. Awareness through social media. Social media is a powerful weapon to uproot ignorance, and it can be used to educate the girls regarding this evil practice. Awareness through speech. Speech can enkindle hope and awaken light. For this reason, we must educate the women by making them realize the ill effects of this dowry system. And the parents must be made to understand they must never discriminate between their daughters and their sons and treat them equally. A girl is a blessing. Her shoulders are a support to her family. Her arms can raise a child. Her heart can love unconditionally. Her feet are meant to stand up for herself in the society and her mindset can change the world. So let the youth, as the change makers, strive to destroy this evil practice from the very root so that every woman in the society is respected as a warrior and as a goddess. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. D'Souza, for giving such a uh, energetic and uh, full of uh, your very, I must appreciate uh, your views. I will only add one thing. If you all convert this energy and put it in such a way and decide that neither, none of you will promote, give or allow their parents to give any uh, dowry, then definitely the society will change. Charity begins from home and you people can change this society. I am sure that uh, the, the way you people are speaking today, it shows a very good hope, a light after the tunnel. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sinora D'Souza for giving your views. Now I would like to invite my next guest and she is youth guest. She is Ms. Teja Kishore. Ms. Teja Kishore, you have heard our chief guest advocate Krishna Goswami and earlier youth guest. Please 
Now, we'd like to know your views on dowry. Uh, Ms. Teja Kishore, please. Namaste. Uh, I am Teja Kishore, and I'm studying in 12th standard in Kulapati Munshi Bhavans Vidya Mandir, Porto, uh, Trishur, Kerala. So, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak over here. So, let me say that Kerala has witnessed several dowry deaths from the death of Anlia, a nurse by profession, up to the death of Vismaya, a BAM, BAMS student. The surge of protests in social media has already subsided. But the teeming question I have is, when will we as a society ever learn our lesson? The menace of dowry is very deep rooted in India, which we can see from the history itself, as Mr. Nishan and said, the Kanyadana. Every man can acquire hundred sovereigns of gold, property rights, and even a brand new car in the name of dowry. And the collective consciousness of our highly literate society fails to address the issue constructively. And the reason? Yeah, almost three fourth of the population in India are the beneficiaries of this God forsaken system. If in the 90s or in the 2000s, an average middle class man could afford to buy a car only during his middle age or walking 40s, the situation now has changed drastically over years. A 24 year old professional with a day job would get a Maruti Swift car as a dowry. If you go further up the ladder, it can be bureaucrats, bank officials, government servants, businessmen, they would ask for SUVs. Though the counter cry may be not all men, there is a glaring disparity between the small populace who don't ask for dowry and the ones who do. While some comply with the system because of societal pr pressure, others take it to be their birthright. Why? Even worse than those who feign innocence. Their innocence would be at its peak. They won't ask for a single penny during the marriage deliberations, but, and also their matrimonial profiles would come out very clean. And still they shamelessly demand dowry a few weeks after marriage. Yeah, only then will the bride and her family realize that it was a facade all along. Hundred sovereigns of gold are the mark, and if a woman's family doesn't have the means to pay it, they will face grievous consequences, ranging from the threat of divorce to physical, mental, emotional, and psychological abuse that often result in death. On the other side of the spectrum, you have men and women enjoying the fruits of dowry. Yeah, don't get me wrong, but this is a harsh reality. This group of young men and women, they never raise their voice protesting against dowry. They are advised their elderly to sell the ornaments and invest the money as a fixed deposit, yeah, to have a fruitful life. They go on honeymoons in their newly gifted SUVs, wait for their investment to grow, to buy a prime property or a villa in the city. Yeah, their life is set. And they are forever indebted to the dowry for it enables them to lead a luxurious lifestyle. Will they ever be able to understand the pain of a woman who was battered to death by her in-laws and beloved? I highly doubt it. Each time you congratulate a colleague on that brand new car he brought by torturing his wife's family, you aid and abet dowry deaths. And each time you buy gold ornament for your daughter and make investments for your son's education in the hope of securing their lives, you're supporting the system. It should be stopped. If you are educated, why ask for dowry if you can eat out a living on your own? And to con uh, I would like to conclude by saying that, for, by asking a question to the society. Do you prefer a dead woman over a divorcee? Very well done, uh, society. Very well done. I'm so bad. Like, I feel so bad uh, hearing people asking for dowry and uh, what do you say, abusing girls 
uh, on the purpose of getting dowry, it is very bad. Um, yeah, that's all for my speech over here. Thank you, Lal Goyal sir, Krishna ma'am, and Paul sir for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ms. Teja Kishore, for giving your views. Yes, your anger is, we can very well see. One thing I can tell you, if you have any sibling, male sibling, please see to it that he should not ask for the dowry. It should not happen that you are advocating for yourself. What about your brother? What about your cousins? See in your entire family, if anyone is asking dowry, boycott that wedding and name and shame him publicly, then the, then the, the society will change. Not only by talking, you have to take action and you can take action, which I'm sure uh, today's, uh, this, uh, the way you people are talking clearly indicates that the time is coming when you will you are going to do these things. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Teja Kishore, for giving your views. Now, I would like to ask, uh, invite my last but not the least guest, and she is Ms. Vazuda. Ms. Vazuda, you have already heard all uh, our ch uh, chief guest, Advocate Krishna Goswami, and earlier youth guest. Now, we would like to know your views on dowry. Ms. Vazuda, please. Okay, thank you, sir. I left my home, I left my parents, but it was not worth. They didn't want me, they just wanted diamonds. A very good, a very good morning to one and all present here. Myself Vasudha and I am, I am currently pursuing BBA as a first year student from Indira Gandhi Delhi Technical University. And also I am an intern at Indo Gulf Management Association. I am very thankful to Lal sir, and Mohan sir for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts on a very, very critical topic, the role of youth in dowry. The phrase I started with isn't really a quote, but more of a vision, a girl who has left everything for a new family, but they are not happy with her. They are happy with the dowry she brought with her. Isn't it heartbreaking? But do any of us here even understand what dowry is? People believe that dowry is just a money given by a bride's family to a groom's family at marriage. However, this is not the case. Dowry is a sum of money, property, or any other thing given by a bride's family to the groom's family at the time of marriage. But is there ever a limit to greed? Never. Even after marriage, many women are tortured and physically abused as a result of it. But when such a thing started, does it have any end? We are filled up with such questions. It is an ancient custom and it continues to be expected and demanded as a condition to accept a marriage proposal in some parts of the world. In Hindi, we call it as the Dahej or the Dahej Pratha. In India, for a very long time, even before the British period, it has been started. The thought behind this pratha is to ensure that a daughter is financially stable and well treated after her marriage, but it's a nightmare for many of the women out there. Parents who can't afford the demands of the groom and his family, sometimes they have to take marriage loans to get their daughter married. Sometimes the demands of the family get too much high that the marriages are cancelled and such things leave their scar on the women and their families. The dowry system is essentially a manifestation of Indian society structure in which males are regarded as superior to women in terms of physical and mental qualities. With such a culture system in place, women are frequently linked to them being considered as a financial burden on their father and on their husband after marriage. The dowry system which feeds the perception that a girl child is a potential burden on the family income versus this attitude. I live in a society where giving and taking dowry is a pride. In our country, dowry is frequently used to demonstrate social status. The amount of money spent on a daughter's wedding or the amount of gold given to them is frequently used to determine one's social worth. The viewpoint strongly supports the practice of dowry demands. The boy family rises in social status as a result of the dowry their new bride brings in which is a measure of his health. Dowry was a very popular in India in ancient times. It's in ancient times. It's not the case now though, but it is not finished even. 
It is even practiced in many parts of the country now also. Do you know how it changed over a period of time? What makes it a change? Everything over time has played its role and changed it. But we, the youth, were the most to make it possible. It takes two hands to clap. You won't give, they don't take. Nowadays, the groom's family is not even considered about dowry. They just care about the girl. Also, from bride's family, they just deny it directly if they were asked for it. But such families are still small in numbers. Moreover, females, are, females have become so independent and blunt. They don't want to marry a person who even thinks like this. But where we played the role? We played and have to play an important role until such practices get abolished. We need to educate everyone that a life of a girl matters. Those materialistic things, money or property are worthless over a female. We not only even need to educate people, but also stop such practices if we see them being practiced and just report them as the law is there. Several laws has been, uh, has been passed to prevent the practice of dowry and discrimination in it causes against women. And the most of the most of the laws Krishna Ma'am has already told us. Uh, like there is a Dowry Prohibition Act passed on May 20, 1961 to eliminate this heinous practice from the society. Not only does the statute make it illegal to accept dowry, but it also makes it illegal to provide it. Also, as Krishna ma'am told, like there is a five years of imprisonment and also the 15,000 rupees of fine. So at last, I would say the government and the people have always shown support for a cause and we do need to. Let's just abolish it until a girl says, I left my family, I left my parents. Yes, it was worth it. They wanted me, not the diamonds. Thank you, all of you. Thank you very much, uh, Vasudha. Yes, you rightly said uh, the girl left, left the family, not the love and affection, and they left the family not for the uh, for just to give the diamonds and the money to the bridegroom. Uh, thank you very much for giving your views. And now our chief guest will give two minutes concluding uh, your uh, concluding remarks. Uh, Advocate Krishna Goswami, please unmute. Uh, you have to give. Yeah, please unmute. Please unmute. No, not yet. Please unmute. Uh, Advocate Krishna Goswami. Uh, I know it has not. Okay, so I think uh, uh, there is some problem there. She. Uh, yes. Now you have. But please switch on your. Please switch on your video. Yes. Yes. Just two minutes. We have the paucity of time. Yes. Please go ahead. Yes. Please go ahead. We can listen to you. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, now we can listen to you. Yeah, go ahead, please. Advocate Goswami, can you speak? Now you are muted. No. Anyway, uh, I think some problem there. So uh, I today's program, which has been live telecasted by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, Malnadu TV India, News Gaonse, Samvas Sarokar News, Bharat Post News, as well as was shown live on Facebook and YouTube. And our end is to bring to you every day new topic. Uh, now, I think uh, Krishna Goswami ji, uh, okay, give me one minute only, one minute concluding yes, time. Sir. Thank you very much for inviting me. The youth which you have selected was excellent team and I hope in near future we are going to hear such youth again. I would like to define one thing in UP, the UP government has given some special relief to such victims and they can get that relief, that fund from the provision officer. I would like to quote one case of this. We have very little time. One minute only, please. Okay. So in, this, uh, in this period of crisis, in this corona, new marriages took place. They said, Ek rupee ki shadi. But in, recently, in my colony, one thing took place. The marriage was decided six months ago. And before seven days ago, they sent a list. It's, these things are to be brought. And, but th when they started opposing, they said, Ek rupee ki shadi thi. But this is all false. They all want money and with bag and berries, the girls should come. Ek rupee ki shadi means what? They are befooling the society. Thank you very much for inviting me, Mr. Lal. Hope to see you again. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you very much, Advocate uh, Goswami. And today, we have seen one thing very clearly. The anger 
the anguish, the uh, the views which has been expressed by the youth, and they all are for one thing that this dowry should be finished, and it has to be finished. Why the girls are treated subordinate to a male? After all, girls are not subordinate. They are as if, if they are not better, but they are not less. We pray the goddess for nine days in Nau Durgas. For what? And afterwards, we kill them, harass them. Is this our society? I think the civil society has to rethink. They should think. They must think. If they will not think, the youth will make them think. Thank you very much. And uh, our end is to bring to you every day a new topic. And uh, as you know that for last two months, we are bringing a, we are doing a program in the evening from 4.30 to 5, where we call a chief guest who has done something in his life. We would like to know what is his or her life journey. And today in the program called Kalaj or Kalal Gwel Ke Sang at 4.30 p.m., my guest, chief guest is Rotarian Deepak Goel, renowned educationist, philanthropist and visionary from Mathura. He will be telling his own life story. Uh, it's like an audiobiography from his own mouth. So please tune in today at, for Kal Aaj or Kal Lal Gwel Ke Sang at 4.30 p.m. Thank you very much. All my youth guests, really, really, it's very heartening. And that's why I got my program extended for five minutes. And thank you very much, uh, Advocate uh, Krishna Goswami, for giving a very, very energetic views. And I'm sure all the viewers who are watching our shows also been we got the message very clearly. Please stop the menace of dowry. Otherwise, the youth is now charged to see 